Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I am back with another channeled celebrity video. Now this one is a blast from the past and this young musician was born on September 18th of 1932. She has a Capricorn moon, she's a Gemini rising, she has a Virgo stellium with the exception of Mercury at 29 degrees of Leo, so out of sign conjunction to the stellium. She has a T-square and multiple, multiple oppositions and squares in her chart, which cause for the conflict in her life, I'm going to say. But what I find most interesting is the Gemini rising. Why, you ask? Because Gemini is all about communication. And it's all about how we learn. And we usually, when we have a Gemini rising, do not learn in the traditional societal way because our parents do not teach us from their roles, meaning mother, female, father, male. The child is left to figure both of those energies out herself or himself. It is as a result, this young singer had to learn how to be both of those things while communicating. Communicating, singing, throat chakra. So she definitely did those things. Now, her Saturn in the ninth house got in the way of her education. She could not get educated in the traditional schooling sense because Saturn blocked it. The moon in Capricorn, the mother, in basic opposition to her Mars in Cancer, which was conjuncting Pluto. I made a face because I'm like, oh my God. Anyway, all of that was what was conflicting her in this life. So I am talking about Virginia Patterson Hensley, AKA Patsy Klein, who died on March 5th in 1963 in a plane crash after coming home from a benefit from another singer who died in a car crash kind of ironic, and she was coming home with other singers and her manager, who was also the pilot of the plane and allegedly a romantic partner at the time, even though she was married with two kids. Now, Patsy took a lot on in her life, and immediately I feel the obligation to her mother. I feel a tremendous sense of obligation to her mother. So her early life was marred by this, this obligation to her mother because of her birth. I don't know what that's about, but that's how Patsy felt underneath. Of course, she loved her mother, but there was way too close a connection in that Patsy felt responsible to caretake the mother. Obviously, she's the child. That isn't her position. But it was her position, and it always was her position. So throughout this life, Patsy felt very strongly about securing her relationship with her mother, which incidentally got in the way of a lot of the relationships with the men in her life. Not intentionally and not overtly, but from behind the scenes in a toxic kind of way because there was an overconnection or an emotional toxicity between the mother and this child. Now, I'm not sure who set that into motion, but what I can tell you is before Patsy was born, I felt a really, really strong focus from her father directed at her mother as if I know I'm gonna get you pregnant and I know that we're gonna have this child and I know that this child is set to do this. So on a spiritual level, there was some kind of knowledge from behind the scenes with Patsy Klein's father. And she was brought into the world in the fashion she was. I mean, we're all brought into the world. You see how that's going? Um, it's doing it again. <laughs> okay, I got to clear it out. Is it going clear? There. Anyway, Patsy was brought into the world the way that we are all brought into the world. We are born. But there was like a marker on Patsy's birth that happened before she was born. So behind the scenes. So she was going to be who she was. And then the father stepped away from their life in order to let that happen. So by the father leaving the family's life, the way that Patsy was put together energetically guided her down the path for her to do and fulfill 
what she was supposed to fulfill. But I don't get that she had recognition of this consciously while she was a kid growing up. Yes, she wanted to sing. Who doesn't want to make money and be famous and be seen as a you know successful singer if that's what you want to do? That all makes sense. But Patsy was marked prior to her birth. So this is something that was going on behind the scenes over several lifetimes. So when Patsy's birth, it was kind of chained. In other words, she was only going to get so far in this life before her life was ended, is what I'm seeing. So there was a plan and it not, I'm going to say this a bit oddly, but not necessarily God's plan, but there was a plan. So we always say God has a plan and everything happens for a reason. I don't actually believe that. I believe sometimes we are caught in a not, in, in, in binding, and we cross over into different dimensions and we come back here, but we come back here because somebody orchestrated it for us because we need to do something that they've promised us to do. This is how I feel with Patsy Cline. I feel that this is why she ended up being who she was to the degree that she was. Now, what I can really truly see as unique about her is she didn't fall into traditional female roles or traditional male roles. And her voice was incredibly melodic and rich. There was a richness to her voice. So her communication style was absolutely amazing. And I will say, and I'm going to say this, the energy I felt is that she was targeted from one lifetime to another. So she was followed throughout incarnations. This is somebody who was marked, does not matter what, what um, body she comes into, does not matter what she does. She was watched, chased, and it was formulated for their benefit, not necessarily for hers which sounds ridiculous if you're just looking at the scope of somebody being successful. But keep in mind, she passed away at the age of 30, and I heard very clearly that she knew that there were exit points in her chart and that they were trying to push her out of those loopholes. That's how it's kind of worded to me. So those loopholes, they were trying to push her energy through them but she survived two of them. And allegedly before she died, she actually was on another plane flight, which I believe was commercial, where she wrote her will on that plane, which almost cemented the action that happened on the little plane that she took from the benefit that crashed. Like it cemented that fact, if you will. So her thinking actually propelled her into where they wanted her to be. So I feel that this was orchestrated. So we can use the words... Uh, energetically chased from lifetime to lifetime, possibly three prior to her being born this way as Patsy Cline and her inordinate ability to create with her voice was something she carries throughout lifetimes and it expresses itself differently. And I heard very clearly they wanted my name. So they wanted to use my name and I didn't want to continue doing what I was doing she changed after the last accident, which anybody would. She really wanted to sing, but she wanted to have more fun. And she was having a lot of difficulties in her life, in her marriage. We, and anybody who's been married knows there's difficulties in marriage. But this was toxically imploding on her. So when she took a lover, and she had several, not just the pilot of the plane, she definitely liked the attention of men. And if I were to say anything, an easy way to get this woman would be to send an attractive man her way because she loved the idea of romance and the physical texture of sex. She liked that. So when somebody likes that, she was like her father like that. When somebody likes that, that is a weakness. And so that weakness can lead them into behavior that maybe can put them in jeopardy. And I feel that this manager slash lover of hers, plane pilot, I feel that this was part of that problem. Now, she wasn't going to go off with him, but he was put into her life. Now, this is interesting. Randomly, I feel like they knew each other through third-party people and other family members. But 
the romantic part was pushed upon her by him, by somebody else behind the scenes here, wanting them to get together so that they could control her through her romantic life. That's actually what was happening. Now, her husband at the time was aware of this. Whether he sensed it, whether he read something, whether he overheard her in a conversation, whether somebody told him, he was aware of this, but that didn't mean that he didn't love her because I feel like she loved him and he loved her. She had children with him, which is for her a testimony of love, but she still felt obligated to her mother. So she was pulled in all these different directions, almost fragmented with the way that she was pulled. Her husband also behaved in a manner like she did. So they were toxic for each other, but yet loved each other. And he would have done anything for her, but she kind of, I guess I could say she, she ignored a lot of what we would call traits that wouldn't be helpful in a marriage from her husband. There was alienation, there was jealousy, there was control. Oh my God, she's trying to get away from the control of men. Every time she came to a man, they would control the crap out of her. Her mother was controlling though behind the scenes and Patsy was exceptionally psychic. She, well, she stated it herself by predicting her own death, but go past that. She could connect with the other side. She got gut instincts with people. She was able to feel things. She even knew, knew that night she got on the plane that she probably shouldn't, but she was in a hurry to get back to do something to change something about her life. She'd made a decision. I made a decision and I'm changing my life. See, here's the problem with that. It's not a problem. It's really great that she wanted to change her life, but here's the problem. When we think here in our heads, and let's say we don't tell anybody and we're just going to change what we do. So let's say you're gonna get sober. Let's say you're gonna change the direction of your career. Let's say you're gonna go back to school. Let's say you're gonna do something else with your life. If you think it, they can hear it if they're chasing you through dimensions. So they will put blocks to stop you from doing what you want to do so that you can never really get where you want to go. This, I feel, was Patsy's problem. I feel that she was constantly being maneuvered from behind the scenes. And I'm not just talking with management, husbands, kids, mothers, fathers, whatever. I'm literally talking with energy that didn't reside on earth because she was marked from her birth onward from before she was born. Her singing allowed her to escape a bondage. So the more that she sang, the more that she freed herself from that mindset and she was just about to see who she really was. That sounds crazy, but that's what I hear. She was going to see who she really was and change her life in a direction that the people around her did not want her to go in. So she was hell bent on going this way and they're like, you're not going to have this happen. So they sent her manager slash pilot person, they sent him into the romantic co column and she started up with him and therefore he was able to articulate back, but he passed with her because he thought that he had more power in what he was doing than he did. They were basically all thrown under the bus, each and every single one of them. They had similar karma, the people on the plane, very similar karma, and they were all trying to change what they were doing in this life to move themselves in, in a different way. All of them had very similar like strands of karma coming through at this time. But there were a few thrown out for good measure. And then the actual people that were targeted were Patsy and her manager. They threw him under the bus to get at her. Her name was used and they wanted to stop her. I don't know what she was going to do, but they did not want her to do it. And I'll tell you another thing. She was getting super, super famous, super, super successful, amazing, okay? And she was working up. They were not going to allow her to do that unless 
she directly stepped into their line of thinking. Y'all know what I'm saying with that. If she didn't step into it, they were going to cause her to stop it. There was no way that she could go on and do what she was doing without them controlling what she was doing. And there was something said to her about her marriage and her children, and then she wouldn't see her children. Okay, can you see that? We've just been blocked out here. This happens. These people come through or something comes through. Let's see if it goes back. Okay, I'm going to have to hit the camera to get it to focus again. Here I go. Okay, y'all... There you go. You see that? You see? It just went out of out of focus. With Patsy, she wasn't going to agree to what they wanted her to agree to. So she was removed. Her husband and kids were kind of put on the chopping block behind the scenes. So if she did this, they would suffer. She wanted nothing more than to be around her kids and she wanted to change her life. She had a lot of envy around her, a lot. But it comes from past lives and the changing, like um, incarnation after incarnation, chasing throughout time and space. Because remember, there is no time and space. I would almost say a little bit like time traveling. They could come forward and they could see her and then they could step back and live in her life or live in that life where she wasn't Patsy Klein. And that's what I see. At the moment of impact of the plane, none of them were on the plane. That too sounds weird. Obviously, their physicalities were on the plane, but they themselves energetically were not on the plane. I'm being shown approximately 16 seconds before the plane hit the ground. They instantly were pushed into another, um, another energetic dimension and I see Patsy going with a woman with long kind of white hair or blonde hair in her 50s and the woman is calling them and it's Patsy there's a person in front of Patsy there's the woman who grabs Patsy's hand I don't know where she comes from but she's grabbing her hand and then there's the other people on the plane Something to do with the pilot being overcome by fumes in the plane as it sputtered and there was a fight in the, in the, with the plane, with the steering wheel, with the engine in the cockpit, I guess, but they're pretty small planes. So everybody's crammed in together, but there were fumes. There was an issue. The engine sputtered. The plane went down the fight to pull the nose back up and then the plane went down and hit sideways, actually hit sideways. That's what I'm seeing. But there was gas or the smell of gas in the plane just moments before it happened. And it, I don't know why that is, but I feel like somebody misaligned something and this could have been just personal person error, but it's weird. They blamed the pilot, AKA lover, AKA manager, but this was all set up this way. Okay. So whoever introduced them set this up. He took the fall for it. I don't feel like it was his fault other than he was flying the plane and he probably shouldn't have flown it since they told him not to, since they said that it was really bad weather, but then the weather cleared up, but he didn't have the experience, but he's like, I'm going to fly you. So it really feels like it was undermined on some level because I can see the smell in everybody's face. I almost feel as if something was in the plane, in the cockpit or around where the pilot is that caused like your eyes to get itchy and like the smell was chemical. And then I feel like that's what started it. And I can see him. He passes out. The plane goes down. Before he passes out, he tries to pull it up, but then passes out, boom, down. And they were so close, so close. This happened. And it. I'm going to say something else really crazy here, which I know is not even being considered. And I know a lot of people don't believe it, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to literally say it. I feel that Patsy had been cursed. The first person to curse her, and I don't believe in like curses, like just because someone screams at you in a parking lot, I'm cursing you. That's not what I'm talking about. She literally had evil energy thrown at her in order to stop her, contain her, pull her back, 
put the reins on her, block her, target her. And this was going on for the last four years of her life. Started with the father's energy. That's why the father knowingly walked away from the family. He made that deal, brokered that deal. Alcoholic, gambler, brokered that deal. Patsy had inclinations that way herself, okay? So remember, with the Mars in Cancer and you've got Mars on Pluto there, you've got yikes, right? Yikes. Um, but this was from a past life. The, this was followed throughout time. So wherever Patsy is now, the energy of that still follows her. When she was getting famous, she was almost going to break free of that energetically, but she died. So there was that. There's also confusion about who her family really is and who her mother was because it's not presented clearly. It's presented for effect. We show ourselves this way. It's an effect. So the mother and Patsy, the mother, the mother, orchest the mother orchestrated a lot of Patsy's behaviors. In other words, the mother was far more calculating than she let on and way, way, way more controlling, but in a dysfunctional way, kind of like codependence and emotionally, I use the word emotionally incest where this is not a physical thing. I mean, where her emotions were too tied to her daughters and Patsy filled a role that was her father's and not hers. And the father facilitated the ending of Patsy's life prior to her birth through the deal that he made energetically along with other people. I literally see them in a room playing cards. This is before anybody's born. Like, well, maybe the dad is born because I see the, the clothing from the time frame. This was brokered. That's why he went after the mother. That is why he had sex with her. That is why he had Patsy with her. That is how he knew to do that. She was bound. I'm talking about the mother. And then the mother bound and continued that with Patsy. So it's a, it's a cyclical thing karmically throughout lifetime that isn't obvious and I don't know that Patsy had the energetic understanding of it or that she was even conscious of it, but she was pulling away from it at every which way. That's why she didn't allow men to control her, even though they controlled her, which is a weird thing. She thought she was in control. So it's this whole cyclical thing and it's an energetic ancestral family patterning that needs to be broke. This is why I feel she died at the age of 30. And it was completely neglectful on the plane's part. So I'm going to just say something. When they check the plane, I don't know who checks it. I guess the pilot, but maybe when they check the plane, let's say if I check the plane and I feel like it's running fine, but consciously I'm not aware that I'm overlooking something because my mind is being directed to not look at that. So I don't look at it thinking I'm looking at everything and doing everything the way it's supposed to be. But mentally for a split second, I've averted my attention from here to here. That's what I feel happened. And then I feel like once they got in the plane, there was some sort of leak or toxic smell. They did not hit the ground. They did not feel it. Obviously the plane did and the bodies did but they themselves did not feel impact. Literally didn't feel it. 16 seconds before the plane crashed is when they were removed from the physical, so they were spared that. That didn't happen. But I see Patsy looking back and I see her thinking of her kids. Like I literally see her looking back and walking this way. So she looks back at her life and goes straight to her kids and then goes this way. Her marriage at the time, her husband was very... Um, he was, uh, he handled it well, but not handled it well. Like he tried and it's probably very hard, but he tried. He did love her. He did love her. They were not good together, but yet they were good together. So it's the typical stuff. Like you're in a relationship, you fight, 
you cheat, you do whatever, and they did that. Now, the husband had some business deals going on behind Patsy's back she'd found out about, and they were going to have words when she got home. But she basically wanted to get home. And even though she had these love affairs, she didn't necessarily take them too seriously. They weren't, they weren't about being serious. They were basically about her connecting in the way that she needed to, kind of like an addiction, like I want to... Go do this because it feels good. It tastes good. It, you know, I like smoking, whatever. She did that. But that's not really what it's about. She also was writing at the time. Um, she wanted to talk and she wanted to move in a different direction. She wanted to slow her life down a bit while raising the energy up over here career-wise in a different way. They did not want to get her out of her contract. She wanted to do things differently and she was standing up for herself. And that's actually why she died energetically. So they used her name. That's what I heard. They used her name and the name has attachment from many lifetimes back and the energy and power of that name are why they used it. So that's kind of a little bit confusing because I'm going back between timelines with this. Anyway, for now, that is my video on Miss Patsy Klein. And I am Sloan Bella from SloanBella.com.